Now, if you have your Bible here, let's open it with me once again to the Psalms 119. Psalms 119, if you remember, we have been going through uh, this psalm, and we're up to tonight to verse 33. That's where we'll, we'll start. And um, we're going to talk tonight about, as you know, I entitled all of our messages. Tonight I entitled it simply, Amen and Amen. And I thought about that. Amen is a transliteration of the Hebrew word into both Greek and English. And uh, Amen means faithful in reference to God, to his, his testimonies and his promises. And there are, are times when when the people of God used Amen and they express their uh, assent to a, a law and not only to a law, also to their willingness to submit to the penalty and the, that are attached to uh, the different things and to the breach of that law. And uh, when we're coming up now, uh, let me just tell you something, share this with you. Deuteronomy 27, 15, and then Nehemiah 5, 13. And uh, that will clear up a little bit of what I was trying to say. But amen. Yeah. What was that again? Deuteronomy 27, 15. Nehemiah 5, 13. Nehemiah 5, 13. And amen is used also to express agreement to another's prayer. And 1 Kings 136 talks about that. But it's, it's also used by some to show a, a remnant. Uh, and by that, I'm talking about when, when someone else is offering thanks to God. You know, and we say, Amen. 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 So, uh, 1 Chronicles 16 36 talks about that. Now, as we think about these verses, that would kind of suggest that we need to let others help us with our prayers. And so what, what I'm talking about here is that when someone else prays a prayer, and that prayer expresses the deep desire of our heart. Have you ever had that? You, you, to yourself, you say, that could have been my prayer. It should have been. He's praying exactly what I feel and what I wish I could, could say. And so when they pray that, the deep desires of our heart, it, it is all, just not only is it permissible, but it's proper that we say amen, either out loud or silently. And uh, so we're going to talk about that for just a few minutes. The, the psalmist here, he offered up many petitions, which we can say Amen. Look at verse 33. Uh, the psalmist was praying to God. He said, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statue, and I will keep it to the end. Now, this is a prayer which every one of us should participate in. Uh, first, to pray this prayer is to make the law of God personal. And secondly, to pray this prayer, well, it internalizes the law of God and it writes it on the walls of our heart. And uh, look at verse, verse 35. To make me to go into the path of thy commandments. Uh, David, the, the great shepherd, it, um, and, and Psalms and, and his uh, great shepherd psalm there he wrote this in verse 23 or Psalm 23 verse 3 he said he meeteth me in the path of righteousness for his name's 
That means that God leads us in the path that are right. Because, you see, God's character is at stake when he leads us. If God, if you're not being led right, it's not God that's doing the leading. Right. The only way God can lead us is in the past that are right. God cannot lead you astray. He cannot lead you into to any disagreements or anything like that. But here in this petition, the, the psalmist is praying for divine leadership. And he, in the praying for this divine leadership, he's praying that he might walk in the right path throughout the remainder of his life. And if, through of Jeremiah, God said this, stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul. That's Jeremiah 6, 16. And move on, look at verse 36. I run my heart to the testimonies and not to covenants. You know, there's feelings of insecurity that run through us. And they run toward that desire for, for profits in the economic world. We all want profits, we want gain. And, and if we're not very careful, what will happen is greed will capture our mind and then our, it captures our heart. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of all of this, we become servants of man. <coughs> and the psalmist was praying here. He was praying that God would deliver him from the lure of materialism and lead him to that which was both eternal and permanent. And he was eager that God would help him guard his heart because out of the heart comes the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Now, this verse has been, has been translated. It says, Bend my heart to your will and not to the love of gain. Now, this is a prayer that each and every one of us should say amen and amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Mm -hmm. Now, the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, he came to recognize that many of the things that, that we look upon with, with desire, that what they do, as much as we want them, but they produce emptiness, despair. We obtain them, and it's not what we thought we no good. But the psalmist here was praying that he might be delivered from all of the pursuits and, and ambitions that, that led to, to emptiness and to, to disappointment. All of us need to join with the psalmist and pray in this prayer. In verse 39. We see here is a prayer for deliverance. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for my judgments are good. Now the NIV, it, it translates it this way. Take away the disgrace I dread. A healthy fear of failure can be both positive and healthy. So here we see the psalmist, he, he's earnestly praying. He's praying for one thing, that God will so work in his life that he'll be saved from making all these decisions and uh, choosing ways that, uh, that will lead to both disappointment and to shame. Now, these petitions that we got here, they're, they're very personal. Look what the psalmist he was given voice here, we see, to a very strong cry for deliverance. He wanted to be delivered from comfortable 
danger. And he wanted his, his petitions to be delivered. And we can all say amen, amen, and amen. Jerry, you pray about that. Father God.